ever had your GPS like totally send you in the wrong direction? Oh, yeah. Or like maybe your internet just conked out right when you're about to find out what happens in your show? Yep. Been there. We've all been there, right? <laughs> but what if I told you those little tech glitches could be like a tiny taste of something way bigger happening out in space? Mm. We're going deep into space weather today. Yeah, space weather. It's a thing. It is. So it's not just like, you know, rain or shine out there. Right. It's definitely not your typical weather report. Not at all. The sun, you know, our friendly neighborhood star, mm -hmm. it can get a little angry sometimes. A little. I'd say it throws some pretty epic tantrums. Okay, epic tantrums. That's one way to put it. So when the sun gets in one of those moods, it lets out these massive bursts of energy, right? Exactly. We're talking solar flares and coronal mass ejections, or CMEs for short. CMEs, got it. Think of it like the sun just hurling a giant wave of charged particles across space. And sometimes we, Earth, just happen to be in the way. You got it. Okay, now that sounds kind of scary. What happens when one of those solar punches actually hits us? Remember those tech glitches we were talking about? Yeah. Huh? Now picture those, but on a global scale. Oh, no. Yeah, not great. Satellites going dark, power grids overloading, communication systems going totally haywire. So more than just a minor inconvenience, though. Oh, yeah. This could disrupt, like, everything. Our entire way of life, even. Wow. So basically, a bad day for the sun equals a really, really bad day for Earth. You could say that. And we've actually got a real-life example of just how bad it can get. Oh. Back in 2003, there were these storms. We call them the Halloween storm. Okay, Halloween storms. Hmm. Spooky. Right. During those storms, satellites malfunctioned. Astronauts on the International Space Station actually had to take cover. And power grids went down all over the place. Blackouts everywhere. No way. Oh, yeah. And get this, airlines had to reroute flights because of communication blackouts. Seriously. Seriously. Now imagine that happening today with how much we rely on air travel. Oh, man. Total chaos. It's crazy to think something happening millions of miles what? away can mess things up so bad here. But you mentioned the Halloween storms weren't even the worst we've seen. Right. Tell me about this Carrington event. What makes that solar storm so legendary? Picture this. It's 1859. Technology as we know it, it doesn't exist. Okay. But there is the telegraph. Right. And people are seeing something incredible, the northern lights. Oh, wow. The northern lights are usually only visible way up north, right? Right. Well, suddenly they were blazing across the globe. Way, way. Everywhere. Even as far south as the Caribbean. You're kidding. I'm not. That's how strong the Carrington event was. Wow. Aurora's in the tropics. That's insane. I had no idea they could stretch that far. Yeah, it was quite a sight. But it also showed us how vulnerable we are to these solar outbursts. Yeah, I bet. The Carrington event, it was so powerful, it messed up telegraph systems all over the place. Really? Sparks were flying from the lines. Operators got shocked. Some telegraph offices even caught fire. Yeah. Now imagine if something like that happened today. Our internet. Gone. To PS. Down. Everything would be a mess. It's like something out of a sci-fi movie. Yeah. So... We've got these invisible solar storms that can mess up our satellites, fry our power grids, take down the internet. That's about the gist of it, yeah. It's a lot to think about, especially with how much we rely on all that technology. Yeah. So what exactly is at stake here? I mean, which systems are most vulnerable to this space weather? Well, satellites are a big one. Right. They're the backbone of how we communicate these days. True. GPS, streaming services, all that depends on satellites. Right. But when a solar storm hits, those satellites get bombarded with charged particles. All right. And that can mess with their signals, make them malfunction, even shut them down completely. So no more GPS. Maybe. No more binge watching. Possibly. That's rough. Okay, what about power grids? How do those fit into all this? Power grids are really vulnerable to these storms too. Basically, a solar storm creates this surge of electrical current in Earth's magnetic field. Okay. And that surge can flow right into power lines, overload transformers, okay. and boom, blackouts. Widespread blackouts. Widespread blackouts. And in our interconnected world, a blackout in one place can have a domino effect. Oh, man. So everything gets affected. Pretty much. Transportation, healthcare, you name it. So no GPS, no Netflix, no lights. Sounds like we're back in the Stone Age. Yeah. But before we all become doomsday preppers, what about solutions? What are we doing to, you know, protect ourselves from these solar temper tantrums? We can't just, like, cross our fingers and hope for the best, right? You're now. right. We can't just, you know, leave it up to chance. There are people working on this, trying to, like, predict 
these space weather events. Okay, so like space weather forecasters. Yeah, kind of. Agencies like NOAA, NASA, they're keeping an eye on the sun all the time. They use satellites like SOHO and Stereo. So they're looking for those solar storms, those flares and CMEs. Exactly. Analyzing data, looking for any signs of trouble headed our way. They even have a rating system like hurricanes. Really? What, like a Category 5 space storm? It's called the G-scale. G1 is minor, up to G5, which is like the Carrington event, the big one. So that gives us some time to prepare, if we know it's coming. That's the idea. Power grids can adjust, satellites can go into safe mode, airlines can reroute, but... But... There's always a but, isn't there? Predicting space weather, it's not an exact science. So we're not there yet with the whole predicting thing. We're getting better, but accuracy and how much lead time we get, it varies. Sometimes it's a few days, sometimes just hours. I see. So we might not always have a lot of time to get ready. It's kind of unpredictable, like the sun itself. That's what makes it so challenging and exciting. We're always learning new things. And I imagine funding for all this is, well, complicated, like... Space weather might not seem as urgent as other problems. It's a tough balance. When the sun's quiet, it's easy to forget about the risk. But then a big solar storm hits. And suddenly everyone's panicking. And the costs, they can be huge economically mm. and just the disruption to everything. It's a risk assessment, you know? Mm. How much are we willing to spend to prevent something that might not even happen? Tough question. But let's shift gears a bit. You mentioned something about comets and a possible connection to space weather. Right. Comets, those icy wanderers. Okay. This sounds interesting. Tell me more. So comets are basically these big balls of ice and dust, leftovers from the early solar system. And as they orbit the sun, they leave a trail of debris. A trail of debris, like a cosmic mess. Pretty much. And sometimes Earth's orbit, it goes right through that debris field. And that's what causes meteor showers, right? Exactly. Those shooting stars. Now, here's the thing. Okay. Some researchers believe that running into those comet trails, those debris streams, could actually mess with the sun. Wait, seriously? Like, cause solar flares and stuff? That's one theory. Mm -hmm. It's still being debated. But the idea is all that dust and those particles, they interact with the sun's magnetic field. Disrupting things. And that could lead to those big energy bursts. It's like throwing a wrench in the works. So comets, solar flares, it's all connected. It's possible. It just shows how interconnected everything is out there, even if we don't fully understand it yet. It's kind of humbling, isn't it? The universe is so vast and mysterious. Totally. And there's so much more to discover. For example, there's this theory about the Milky Way itself, our galaxy, and how it might influence the sun. We've been talking about, you know, the sun, comets, but there's an even bigger picture here. Bigger picture. What, like, zoom out to the whole universe. Almost. Think about the Milky Way, our galaxy. We're on a journey through it. Right. Our solar system is moving through space. Exactly. And the Milky Way, it's not empty space. There are, like, currents out there. Currents, like, in the ocean. Kind of. But instead of water, it's charged particles, magnetic fields. It's all this stuff swirling around. Wow. So, like space weather, but on a super, super massive scale. You got it. Galactic weather, if you will. And those currents, they can influence the sun. Seriously. You mean what's happening? Like, millions of light years away could affect the sun? And then us. It's a possibility. There's this thing called the galactic current sheet. It's this huge undulating sheet of electrical current. Okay, a giant sheet of electrical current. Got it. And we, our solar system, we're bobbing up and down through this sheet as we travel through the galaxy. Oh, we're bobbing. Well, you know, moving through it. Yeah. And those magnetic fields, the particle density, it all fluctuates. Some scientists think that could be messing with the sun, causing those solar flares and CMEs. That is wild. So we've got comets, the Milky Way. It's like everything's connected. Right. It's all part of this grand cosmic dance. Okay, but let's talk about something a little closer to home. Like, literally, you said before that space weather could affect our health. Right, right. So Earth's atmosphere, it protects us, mostly. Yeah, mostly. During really strong solar storms, though, there's more radiation. And that's not good. Not good, especially for astronauts. Because they're outside of the atmosphere. Exactly. Spacewalks during a solar storm, that's a scary thought. Like in the movies, when they get stuck out there. Yeah. Those movies get some things right. Makes you think twice about wanting to be an astronaut. <laughs> it's definitely a consideration. What about those of us stuck on Earth, though? Any risks for us? There's some research, still early, but it suggests a link between solar activity and some health stuff. Like what? Heart rate, blood pressure, things like that. 
We need more research to be sure, but it's something to keep an eye on. Especially with all this talk of going to Mars and stuff. Long space missions. Absolutely. We need to keep astronauts safe, and that means understanding all the risks. Right. Can't send people to Mars if they're going to have a heart attack from a solar flare. Exactly. Well, this has been fascinating. Yeah. Eye-opening. It's a lot to take in, right? It is. From those solar flares to, like, galactic currents, space weather is way more intense than I ever thought. It's humbling, isn't it? To yeah. realize how much is going on out there and how much <laughs> we're still learning. Totally. So as we wrap up here, what's, like, the one big takeaway you want listeners to remember about space weather? I think it's that we're part of something so much bigger than ourselves. Everything's connected, the sun, the stars, even our health. So next time you see a shooting star, remember, it's not just pretty. It's a tiny piece of a vast, incredible, and sometimes kind of scary universe. I love that. And hey, next time my GPS freaks out, at least I'll have a cool story to tell. Space weather, who knew, right? You said it. Thanks for joining us on this incredible deep dive. My pleasure. Until next time, keep looking up.